love you and we praise your holy name. Thank you so, so very much, Lord, for allowing us to praise and to worship you. And thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, your wonderful presence, Lord, being here with us. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for each person, each family, Lord, who came here, came, gave their tithing and offering to you as an act of worship. I want to pray blessings upon them and their families. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for each person here today, Lord, they'll completely die to their will, die to themselves, Lord, and open up their spiritual ears and eyes they can see and hear and understand, Lord, your word. I pray for myself, Lord, that I completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for an unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me, Lord, to allow the word to flow here this morning. There's someone here that needs to be born again or healed or set free or delivered, Lord, from anything. Let them accept you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today's message is the failure and judgment of man under the Noahic Covenant. What we're doing is for the last 10 weeks, we've been showing you the highway of the seed, and we're, we're going to continue doing that. But there's a few things coming up. Like, for example, today is going to show you what happened at the end of the Noah Covenant and before it goes to the next covenant, but how God still keeps the spiritual seed going. Now, there's something that's coming up here in two weeks that's going to cause us to pause for the whole month of September, how many here knows what that is? <laughs> we always in our church always celebrate and teach on the feast of Almighty God. Okay, it's the Lord's feast. We know that the very first four feasts have been biblically fulfilled: the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the starting of the new covenant church. Amen. Now, the last three feasts in the fall have not been fulfilled yet. So that's what's coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you now in advance, okay, starting today, go ahead and start looking at yourself, preparing, um, searching, in other words, fasting, whatever you want to do over the next, the next couple of weeks. And why am I saying that? Because the next feast to be fulfilled is the catching away of the new covenant church, which is made up of Jews and Gentiles, what a lot of people call, quote, the rapture. People say, oh, I can have it any time. No, it can't. Sorry. Not being me when I say that. God's word is biblically right on schedule. Amen? And everything on God's timing in his biblical calendar that's happened so far, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the starting of the church, all these years was a feast day, was a dress rehearsal. And you can read it in Scripture exactly at the right moment, the exact time of the feast days when it fell on God's calendar is when it was fulfilled. Okay? So all this stuff out here, living in fear, God can come back at any time. No, the Bible does not teach that. The Bible makes it real clear to us that you as Christians, we know, not the exact day, but we know God's seasons. God don't, does, it says wrath is not appointed unto you. Hallelujah. So we don't know the exact day, but we definitely know the seasons. That season's getting ready to come up starting in the very beginning of September. So September 5th and 6th is going to start. That Monday will start the actual feast day. And it's important that we understand how this is laid out. So that's getting ready to come up. So between now and then, we're going to show you biblically so far, the spiritual seed's coming along. Now they're going to show you what happened in Scripture after man, Noah's sons, in other words, had all the nations out here on the earth. And then next we're going to get into the actual Abrahamic covenant. Then we'll have to pause it until we get into the September feast. So it's very important. Most folks that have been taught these things, let's start off by, if you don't miss Joyce, put up the eight covenants and seven dispensations. Some of you don't even believe in this. And that's fine. But they're in Scripture. Okay? And here's what you can find out in Scripture is this right here. After every single one of the covenants and dispensations of time, there is a judgment. And we've already gone through the, Eden, Eden, the Edenic covenant and then being innocent and in what happened, and there was a judgment there. Then it goes into the Edenic covenant, and they had a conscience now. Okay? Their eyes got opened up, and there was a judgment there. Now the Noahic covenant... It's what we've been teaching on for the last several weeks, and that's where human government started, which is that dispensation of time. 
Now this is what's important about this one here. This judgment here, you're going to see it in Scripture, but part of what happened here in Noah's time and this dispensation is still going on today and it will continue going on into the very end. I'm going to show that to you today. That's why it's important to understand this. But behind every single covenant and dispensation, there's always a judgment. Now, how many knows where we are today as Christians? We're in the last eighth covenant called the new covenant, and Christ has fulfilled that for us. Amen? Y'all believe that? The problem is, do you understand it? Do you know who you are in Christ? Do you know the authority and power that you've got? Hallelujah. And what dispensation are we in? That started way back when the cross was. It's called grace. Hallelujah. That's the dispensation of time you're in right now. But how many here knows, and y'all know this, I'm sure, if you are a born-again believer, that last dispensation of time there is called kingdom. Where is God's kingdom at right now? It's not, it's not somewhere up in heaven. Where's, where's it at? The Bible says it's inside you. You're God's holy temple, and it says his kingdom is not over here or over there. It's not meat and drink. It is, it is what righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, and it is within every single born-again believer, Jew or Gentile, God's kingdom is inside you. And you're supposed to seek first what? The kingdom of God, how to operate in that kingdom. And then when this last dispensation is manifested back on the earth, that kingdom bam, comes back on the earth, hallelujah y'all gonna hold this anybody so it's important for us to know these things are coming up and what's taking place so there's gonna be a spiritual judgment so I wanna show you in scripture cause last week I showed you remember in, in, in Genesis 10 that every nation on the whole earth is listed right there in Genesis 10 Every kind of thing that has come out of something, even the, the uh, genealogists go back here and look at this because it goes back to Noah's sons. And you've got to understand, every single one of them, from China to Russia to America to Ireland to everybody, goes right back here. Okay. Now what's important is, I want to share the story with you about his sons. Now let's look at the judgment that took place afterwards. So go to Genesis 11 and look at verses 1. Because, see, Satan has tried his best to stop the spiritual seed from the very beginning going all the way to Christ, and he could not stop it then, and he ain't going to stop you either. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's inside you, and as long as you understand this, Satan is defeated. He can try all he wants to, but how many of you know God is more powerful? Amen? Now, let's look at this. Genesis 11 and look at verses 1. This is after his sons now has gone out across the whole entire earth. Look what it says. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Now this is important to understand this and what's taking place because how many of you have ever heard this before? Does it sound like anything you've heard in church? Look what it says again. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Does that sound familiar to you at all? It should, because if you don't realize this, what you're seeing here is a parallel of the church. It's right the opposite, but it's parallel to the church, and most folks miss this, so I want to make sure you see this. It says, they were of one language and of one speech here on the earth, and right now what we're talking about here in chapter 11 is without God. These folks right here across the whole entire earth spread out and they're of one language, of one speech, and they're fixing to mess up. Now look what it says here in Acts 4, verses 32, and see how it compares to the church today. And the multitude of them that believed were of what? One heart and of one soul. That's how the church is supposed to be. Watch, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. I'm showing you the parallel. Church today is supposed to be one mind, one accord, in one spirit, in Christ, in the kingdom is how it's supposed to be. Here these guys in chapter 11, all his sons, has come together as one speech, as one body, minus God. Now watch this. This is important. You see what's fixing to take place here. Look at Genesis 11 and look at verses 2 through 4. Watch what happens. 
And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they were found uh, a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, now watch what they say to each other. Go to let us, in other word us, make brick. And hugely, in other word brick. How many here knows who your cornerstone is? How many here knows what your foundation is, is on Christ the stone, and it ain't brick? Okay? I want you to see what man's doing for themselves here, minus God. Let us go and make brick and burn them thoroughly, and they had brick for stone. It was replaced. Watch. And slime had they for mortar. And they said, go let us build us a city a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. It's important that you understand what's talking about the us. The us there is minus God. Okay? You got all these folks of one mind, one language, coming together in one speech and minus God, we can do it our own way. That's exactly what they were doing right here. It's important you see this. Okay? Now, what does that sound like today? Because I'm telling you right now, if you re research this, you'll find the exact same thing going on today. That exact same spirit you see right here in Genesis 11. I can do it my way. Let us come together. We can do it. We don't need God. We can make a name for ourselves. We can build a tower. We're strong. We're powerful. What does that sound like? Think about it. Because that exact same spirit still lives today. You think you can do anything without God? That's what's taking place right here. That same spirit is alive very well. Now, this is worldly. It is not spiritual. Understand, they're trying to worldly means to build this tower, to make their name minus the spiritual means of Almighty God. Um, what is the result of this? It is man-made unity, man-made authority, which is traced back to the papacy. I mean, we're heard of the papacy. It goes back to the Catholic Church. I'm just trying to show you the truth. This is exactly what it is. We've got authority. We're in control. Look at all the majesty. Okay? We're ruling. And God's not behind it. There's no spirit there. How many here knows God did not create the Pope and God did not create the Catholic Church? I'm not being me when I say that. Okay? I'm not saying individual people. I mean the actual church that has tried to replace the biblical true church. Look at it for yourself. You'll see the exact same spirit here in the world, and that's what it's all about, world. is the exact same spirit you see there. Here's the actual, what the actual definition is. The office and jurisdiction of the Bishop of Rome, Pope, presides over the uh, central government of the Roman Catholic Church and is completely all man-made. Let's let us make a name. God didn't do that. Let, let us build a tower and all the majesties and all the stained glass windows and all the wealth and our own city. How many of you know there's a city for the Catholic Church? All without God. It's all man-made. Y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? Some folks don't want to hear that. Don't matter. It's, that's what the Bible says. Okay? I'm not going to tiptoe around it. I'm going to show you what it means. So here, in the exact same thing in Genesis 11, now look at verses 5 through 7. Look, look, look what happens here. This is important. Now watch. Verses 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. How many here today know you are not children of men? What, what's your position? Sonship. You're children of God and your position is sons of God. Hallelujah. Here we got children of men who's got God nowhere in it. Let us do it for ourselves. Look at the world today. What do you see? The exact same thing. Even after 9-11, what was it? We are going to build back better. We're going to build back stronger. We're going to do this thing. We, 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 we. Okay? 
Take God out of schools. Take God out of your government. Take God out of everything and go against God, but we can do it. That's a slap in God's face. The exact same spirit you saw there is what you see right here. But hear me, guys. I'm telling you, it's going on today. It's a spiritual battle. Look at this. The Lord came down to the city and the tower which the children of men builded, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is what? One. One. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will, watch as God speaking, will restrain them from, from, from them which they have imagined to do. So what does God say in verse 7? Go to let us. Now the us there, who is that? That would be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The us is saying, let's go down there and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Well, that's mean. No, it's not mean at all. It's not mean, it's not mean one bit if you understand what's taking place. God said, let's go down there, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, because they are the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son are as one spiritually. The people on the earth are becoming as one without God. You cannot get to heaven and build a tower and take over and do what you want to minus God. God's one who created it all. And what does man do today? Exact same thing. God, we don't need you. I'm going to do my own thing. Trust the government. Trust the world system. What do you think Satan's doing, guys? Why am I showing you the same spirits here today? What do you think Satan's trying to do right now? At the end times, what's he doing? Build a one world government, build a one world religion, and bring everybody back together under a one world government and one world religion. That came, goes right back to this very tire of Bible. The exact same spirit is still going on today. And God himself come down here and he confounded it and on purpose he spread them out. God did that. He don't want you coming together as one in anything minus him. There's powers and numbers. He can go out here right now in the world system and have all kind of evil come together as one and have power because you're in, in numbers. God wants us to come together as one, together church, spiritually with his power. Hallelujah. So what does he do about this? Y'all want to go deeper and see this? Because I want you to see this. Why? Because most people are missing and not understanding about being as one. Okay? So here they are in their flesh, man-made, no spirit without God trying to do this. And God said, that's not going to happen. So God turns around and does something. Isaiah 13.1 actually talks about this as a prophecy. It says, The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Now here's what's interesting about this in the Greek and the Hebrew. Let me kind of give you some understanding here. How many of you, first of all, has ever taken any classes that speak any other language? Anybody? Can, can you speak more than one language? That's nothing wrong with that. But how many here knows if you need to go buy a DVD or CD or whatever to help you take a class, how many here knows what it's called? Y'all know? What's the biggest selling word document you can buy that's made for that? It is called Babel. Babel. It goes right back here to the very tower. Are y'all seeing this? Of Babylon. Now here's why it's important. Because the Hebrew word means masa which means heavy-weighted thing in a message. It is heavy because the wrath of God is in it. Okay, God is the one who come down here. God is the one who separated them because God says what they can imagine that they can do. Do you realize how powerful it is, your imagination? Do you realize there's nothing ever been created upon this earth? Nothing including this carpet, this pew, anything you see, unless it comes from the spiritual world. You understand that? There's nothing just out here in the natural. You know what? I'm just going to do this. No, it's got to come from the spiritual world first, go through your mind, through your imagination, and you must see how I can accomplish this. How can I pass this test? How can I build this thing? How can I create something? Because God makes it come through his spiritual world first. Y'all can hold this. Including the negative including the demonic. Here they are without God. God has already created man. 
They have spirit, soul, and body. So they come together and they imagine they can do this thing. They're going to work together to make it happen. But when you're minus God, you can never accomplish it. That's why there's no way to Almighty God except through Jesus Christ. Y'all, is anybody seeing this? That's why it's so important to know biblically what these things are talking about because the Hebrew word is amazing. The Greek word actually goes back to the word Babylon. The Hebrew word means Babel. But both of them means the exact same thing. It means confusion. Confusion. Now God allowed this to happen because he did not want them coming together. He wanted to be separated. And it's important that you see this. This is where you got all the nations of the earth, all the different languages. God Almighty did this. Okay, it went by accident. God did it. Why? Because you cannot communicate with each other. He don't want you to communicate with each other in the natural minus God. Y'all seen this, anybody? So God himself did this. Now, if you understand this, today what's taking place, the whole social order of the world has fallen today, right now as we speak, under a Gentile world domination. How many here knows it's still there? What they was trying to do then is still going on right here today. Has not left. It's just like the Tower of Babel. So when you look out here today in the world system, what do you see? It's the Babylonian system. Who's the head of the Babylonian system? The devil himself. So you got governments, you got nations out here all over the place now, and what do we do? Let's take God all out of it. Is that right? Am I, I mean, am I, am I wrong about that? How many schools put God in it? Think about what's going on today. We care more about people's feelings and how you feel and what you want versus what Almighty God has to say about it. Are y'all seeing this, anybody? That's why it's so important that you see biblically. Look at Luke 21 and look at verses 24 because this is something you need to understand what's taking place today, how this is tied back to this very subject in Genesis 11. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led by a way captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. How many understands the times of the Gentiles goes right back to all these nations that were spread out there in Genesis 11 by Almighty God and the Bible says the Gentile world system will stay here until the very end. Just because there's a judgment, and there are judgments taking place here, understand all the eight covenants must be fulfilled, and all the dispensations of time must be fulfilled. If you look out here today, I'm only showing you what's taking place and where it's coming from. Okay? So understand, how many of you have heard of the times of the Gentiles? There's also something called the fullness of the Gentiles. I'm going to show you the difference here in a minute. So understand, all of the Gentile world power is the gen- times of the Gentiles. In other words, um, the Babylonian system is made up of the United States, Canada, China, Name them, any of them, Russia, all the nations. I'm not saying the nation itself is a bad nation. What I'm saying is they're ruled by the Gentile world power Babylonian system and that's what the Bible says was going to happen. He would give them power on purpose and it's called the times of the Gentiles. Now it's going to end at a certain point. The Bible makes it real clear. So I want you to see what's taking place here and where it comes from and there is a judgment. Again, is there a parallel to the church? Yes, they are. Look at 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now watch this. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there will be no divisions among you, but ye that be perfectly joined together in the same mind in the same judgment. God Almighty wants the church to come together. Now, this is important to see this. You can be from other nations. Now, watch. Other countries that has been spread out, but God has made a way for everyone who's, who's been spread out to come back together as one spiritually. 
Now, I want you to see what God's trying to show us here because if you understand what I'm talking about, the world wants everybody to come together under Satan's domain, under a one world religion, and that's not what God wants. Um, go back and look at Genesis 11 and look at verses 8 and 9. Genesis 11, verses 8 and 9. Now watch. So the Lord scattered them abroad from among, upon the face of the earth and they left off to build the city. In other words, God stopped them from doing that. Look at verses 9. Therefore is the name of it called Babel because the Lord did there confound the languages of the earth and from, from thence did the Lord scatter them ab uh, abroad upon the face of the earth. Why is this important? Because, again, he's stopping what Satan's plan is. And it's still in place today. Most folks don't have no idea. Listen, pray for your government, but, don't put, but, but, but do not trust them. Who do you trust? Who is my government? Who is your government? Who is your true government? Are you a born-again believer? Okay, your government is a kingdom of Almighty God. He is your king. That's your spiritual government. But on the earth, if my natural government honors Almighty God and does what they're supposed to do, I lift them up. If they go against Almighty God, I will choose Almighty God before I will my government here on the earth. Does that make any sense? If you, if you don't live that way, you're not living the way God wants you to live. It's just that simple. That's what the Bible is teaching us. So Babel, they're scattered all over the earth. Again, it is parallel with a church. This has, had been, this has been fulfilled spiritually, and most of you already know this, but let me show you the way it happened in Scripture. And let me show you what it means in Scripture and how you're grafted in. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I want you to see this. Acts chapter 2. You know the story. Most of you do. And again, I've been teaching this on Wednesday night for, for many, many months now. And so far, in Acts chapter 2, this has got no, no, nothing to do with Gentiles. But we get grafted in later. But look at what happens here. Because again, the feast days are in play here. This is the fourth feast day. Get ready to be fulfilled. Look at Acts 2, verses 1 through 8. Y'all know the story. And when the days of Pentecost. Okay, Pentecost is not something that the church of God made up. Okay, church of God has nothing to do with Pentecost. People say, well, I'm a Pentecostal Christian. No, you're not. You're either a Christian, born again, or you're not. No such thing as a Pentecostal Christian. Well, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on what they have right here. Was you born a Jew back in those days? No. Then you don't have what they had. This here was done for a perfect reason to start the beginning of the new covenant church. Hallelujah. And what God did here was for a purpose and you get granted into it. Now watch this. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Who's they? All Jews. Jews. No Gentiles at all. Watch. Watch, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. Why did he do that for? To give us our own prayer language. No, it's, that's not biblical at all. That's not, no inscription does it say that nowhere. So quit making that junk. That's not why this happened. Why? why? Look at this in verses 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, on the word other tongues. And where do other tongues come from? Go back to Genesis 11. And Genesis 11 says God confounded their languages and God spread them out across the whole earth. That's where other tongues come from. Well, I've got a heavenly tongue. Show it to me in Scripture. God gives me my own prayer language as Aztec Indian. Show it to me in Scripture. You're just making up junk. That's not biblical nowhere. Because you don't want to really go back to Scripture and look at what it really says. I'm not saying that you can't pray in tongues. You should. And God can give you a prayer language. But your prayer language that you're going to be speaking whenever the Holy Spirit speaks it through you is going to be a language known of this earth. That's what the Bible says. Look it up. I, I didn't make this stuff up. That's what the Bible says. Very clear. It's a tongue that you don't understand, but somebody else can't understand. Does that make any sense? And it goes right back to Genesis 11. Look at this. 
And the Spirit gave them utterance, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation. Why is this happening? Because, watch, God in Genesis 11, under that covenant, the punishment was, he scattered them across the whole earth because they're trying to get to God minus God. They're trying to get to heaven minus the Holy Spirit. And God now, through the covenant, the Bible says, he has died first feast day, he was buried second feast day, he resurrected third feast days, 50 days later, he brings the Holy Ghost down on the fourth feast day to watch, to, to, to fulfill something here. He scattered them out, but he has all the Jews come back to Israel who's been scattered out throughout all these nations. And you look it up, these nations match chapter 11. It's pretty cool. Watch. Under heaven, now this was noised abroad and the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Heard them speak what in his own language that was confounded all the way back, all the way back to Genesis 11. Heard them preach the gospel. Heard them preach the word of God in their own language. Watch. And they were all amazed, marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak uh, Galatians? And how we are here every man in his own language where we were born. They were always born. And if you, if you, if you keep reading um, verses 9 to 11, it's going to say, it's going to listing out all these different languages that they spoke. That's the language is right there. It gives the languages to you. And every other place in the Bible where it speaks about this, it's talking about the exact same thing. But no, we today had to change the whole meaning of the Bible, not understanding the whole point of why God did this. The whole point of this is to make one way, a path, a path for all the nations to come together as one, not minus God to build a tower, but to come together as one because Christ fulfilled this spiritually. Are you going to hold this? And I want to bring all the nations together as one under Jesus Christ. Does that make any sense? It's important we see this. Christ fulfilled it, come together as one. There's no way that anybody can build a tower and get to Almighty God. You can't do it. You have no power to do that. It has to be through Jesus Christ. Go to Revelation 16, 19. Revelation 16, 19. I want you to see something here. Revelation 16, 19. So powerful. It's real, it's real simple, guys. God's given mankind a, a choice. You have the Babylonian system, which is the world system, and then that's, that's the times of the Gentiles, and he's made a way through himself for everybody born into to the Gentile system to come through him. No other way. Any else you think you see, like, like the Catholic Church and all these stained glass windows everywhere, that's all man-made. That won't get you to heaven. Look at this. Look at what it says in Revelation 16. And look at verses 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And the great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So understand, guys, how important this is. There is a time of a difference, and I want to make sure you get a hold of this, between the fullness of the Gentiles and the times of the Gentiles. So what's the difference? The times of the Gentiles is the world system being in charge of everything you see out here right now. Okay, that's what you're seeing. That's called the times of the Gentiles, and that will remain in place until a certain time. I'll show it to you in the scripture in just a minute. There's also something called the fullness of the Gentiles. And what is that? This is referring to the natural and the grafted in olive tree. Go to Romans chapter 11. I want you to see this because this is where most churches miss it and this is where most people get off track and that's why we're never taught about the Hebrew because we miss this part. If you're trying to get to God, church people, by religion, 
you are trying to build that tower out to Almighty God. If you're trying to get there by your good works, by being a good person, or I'm a Baptist Christian, I'm a Methodist Christian, I'm a Church of God Christian, I'm a Presbyterian Christian. No, you're not. That's not Scripture nowhere. Show it to me in Scripture. It's not there. Quit putting, adding something to Scripture that's not there. You're still divided. Just as God divided them and scattered them out, you're still divided under denominations, under religions of men, you're still divided. The Bible says there's one way, there's one true holy church, hallelujah. You're going to hold this. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm not a Pentecostal Christian. I'm just a Christian born again believer, hallelujah. Y'all seen this, anybody? That's why it's important to know what this is talking about because look at Romans 11 and look at verses 25. For I would not have you, brethren, but you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise unto your own conceits. The blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles. Until the fullness of the Gentiles. What's the fullness of the Gentiles? I'm going to show it to you here. To the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And, now watch what it says. And so all of Israel shall be what? Slaughtered and gone to hell. Does it say that? No. So the Gentiles can replace Israel. Does it say that? No. It says, so all of Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. If you don't understand Hebrew and what I'm showing you about these feast days and about the spiritual seed line, you'll fall right into the world Babylonian system trying to get to God your way under religion and miss this and you're going to have a hard time. You're going to hold this? Y'all seen this, anybody? The way he made is through Jesus Christ and Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He made a spiritual way to bring all of us back together, one spiritually under him, hallelujah, and you're grafted into it. I'm going to show it to you in the scripture just one minute. Okay? Any other way is a fake way. Any other way is false, period. The fullness of the Gentiles is God had a set time for Gentiles to be grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. That's a fullness. The fullness will stop, hear me on this, when the church, coming up in a couple weeks, what it, what, it, what it represents, when the biblical church of Israel and Gentiles come together as one, made up in the spirit the new covenant church, when God takes his bride and snatches up, us up out of here because we're not appointed to wrath, the fullness of the Gentiles stops. Boom. That's it. The time of the Gentiles remains for seven more years because all the world system, times of the Gentiles, will eventually surround Israel. You've know, heard of Armageddon, haven't you? And they'll start trying to attack and come against Israel. And God at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, the Bible says, after he pours his wrath out, he now will annihilate all of the times of the Gentiles, all these nations that's trying to come against his way, his only door that he created through his son. Is anybody seeing this? Well, I've never heard it before. Well, look it up. Do your own study. You can't just make up stuff it is right back to Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel, the world system, and I think you're going to get to heaven that way because you're not. You've been lied to. But I say my Romans Road prayer. Show that to me in Scripture. It's not there either. People have lied to you through religion and people try to live their life by, I said my prayer, I believe in Jesus, now I'm going to go live the way I want to in the world because I'm part of the world system too. I want to fit right in here with them. And you can't tell a person who says it's a Christian versus the world system. You don't get a hold of this, anybody? So what does the Bible say? Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Make sure again you know what I'm talking about. Times of Gentiles is the world system. Fullness of Gentiles is God's way of getting us grafted in. Y'all seeing the difference? It's important to see this. Because guess what? I'm no longer a Gentile. And you're not either. Gentiles was considered dogs. Seriously, that's what the Bible says on that too. You're not worthy. Nobody's worthy. And God created Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he made a way. Hallelujah. 
And when I get grafted in, I now become, as we said earlier, royalty. I now am part of his family, not because how good I am, because how good he is. Does it make any sense? When you learn how to live in Christ, you'll have peace. Look at this, Ephesians 2. That's what the Bible says. Look at verses 12 and 13. This is talking to the Gentiles who were scattered out among the world in Genesis 11. Look at this, Gentiles. You want a you way back to heaven? Here's your answer. And watch, through the Holy Spirit. And you can read the whole thing, but I'm just going to give you a few, few verses here. This is about Gentiles. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. If you're aliens today from the commonwealth of Israel, you're probably not saved. If you've been lied to and you've been told, replacement theology, that these Jews killed my Jesus and God turned around and built the church upon the Gentiles, you've been lied to. You're going right back to the Tower of Babel. You're under a Babylonian system. That's not in Scripture nowhere. That's why I'm strong on Wednesday night. Acts 1, Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 4, all the way to Acts 9, there's not one Gentile among them. There was not one Gentile in the upper room. There was not one Gentile when the Holy Ghost fell, when he built the new covenant church. So Gentiles, get off your high horse. Quit trying to climb that tower. Quit trying to build it. Quit trying to be religious and do what God says. He made a way, hallelujah, and you enter in through it through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you will be part of the commonwealth of Israel and be born again, or you will not go to heaven. Period. That's not popular, but that's what the Bible says. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Look at this. It says that you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. You don't have the covenants unless you go through it this way. That's what the Bible says. There is no covenants under Greek theology. There is no covenants under the curse of the Tower of Babel. Y'all seeing this? Having no hope, you all hope this is how you get it. Without God in the world. If you're in the world system, you have no hope. You're still trying to get it your own way. Look at verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you are sometimes afar off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. Go to verses 19. We're almost done. Watch this. The last, last few, few, few verses here. Now therefore, Christians, hear me, you are no more strangers and foreigners. If you've been born again, and you don't hate Israel, watch, but fellow citizens with the saints. Who's the saints? It's referring to Israel. And of the household of God. And they're built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. And Jesus Christ being the chief corner brick. Does it say that? No, cornerstone. Because this stone, hallelujah, is spiritual. It's not man-made with slime out of brick from a man who's trying to do it their own way. Y'all seeing this, anybody? It says, in whom all the building, what does it say? Framed together, groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are builded together in a habitation of God through the Spirit. So bottom line, guys, it's real simple. Real simple. Genesis 10 lists all the nations. Genesis 11 shows you what happens, the failure of mankind without God. And that's today, it's still going on. China, North Korea, South Korea, Vietnam, all the country you can name comes right back to this. United States, Canada, Russia, name any of them, okay? And any nation that puts God first will be blessed. Any person or nation that blesses Israel, you'll be blessed. You curse Israel, you'll be cursed. Because Israel is where Christ came from and he made a way, hear me, for us to be granted into the commonwealth of Israel. You are a spiritual Jew. If you're not, you're probably not born again. That's what the Bible says. Clearly, it doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to get you to see what's taking place here. So bottom line is, the failure and the judgment of mankind was there and it's still going on today. The devil still wants to build a one world government, still wants to build a one world religion. He's still trying to get that Tower of Babel built, made without God. It's still going on, but God has a plan. He made the way for the Gentiles' fulfillment and the times of the Gentiles, both.
He's laying it out there. So it's right here in Scripture. So Christians, you should rejoice because you should be able to walk out here right now in the world system and look around and say, I don't fit in here. I can see what's going on. I'm not blinded. I'm not following the way of the world system. You feel sorry for these folks because they can't see. What you have inside you is God's kingdom, hallelujah. So pray for them, but don't fall into their trap, amen? Can we stand to our feet? Y'all, y'all sure are quiet today. Are y'all, y'all, are y'all getting all this? I hope so. And then it's going to get deeper next week. We're going to start into Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All that will also show you where the Muslims come from. You need to understand that as well because that's part of the end times coming up right now as we speak. As you see all around you, all the beheading and all the garbage, the jihad and all the stupid crap going on you see on TV. This is where it comes from. This is where it comes from. Isis came from the same place. So don't sit here as a Christian. Please don't. Well, the Muslim faith's good. No, it's not. The Muslim faith is not a good faith. I'm sorry. I'm not being mean. You're not going to go to heaven and fall on that faith. It's not going to happen because that's a different God. It's not the same God as Christians. And that great access being mean, I didn't write the Bible. I'm just trying, just trying to show you the way. His name is Jesus Christ. So come back for that. That's going to get deep next week. It's important, guys. Now, if you're here today, I always give you an opportunity to be born again or to come pray for a loved one. If you need to come just pray by faith for whoever or whatever, you do that. If you're here today and you're not born again, then this is your opportunity. Because God don't promise us tomorrow. He does not. He's not saying if it's going to be hunky-dory and easy. It's not. He said, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. And he can give you peace. He can give you strength among battles, among anything you go through. Will you be tired? Yes. But God's with you. Amen. He'll walk with you. Whatever you go through in life, he'll be with you. How many of you believe that? So what's your need today? There's nothing too big for God. Healed, was set free or delivered from anything. I can't do it, but he, but he, he already has. Who here believes that? Okay. Thank you guys for coming today. I hope you got something out of this. I hope it makes sense to you. Uh, go back and look at it again. Uh, go back and send it out to a friend. But look at what the Bible really says. And it's amazing when you start learning these things, Satan can't trick you anymore because you know who you are and where you come from. Amen. Amen. Jeff, you mind closing your prayer, please?